say the family has a dinner with some special guests and then um, other guests are will arrive so they have to pass through the these people here this group okay although another way may be to ask them to go to a detour to the this side but that's very cumbersome and that, that's uh, that's very rude <laughs> They're not going, you're not letting in, in them into the house. Um, it's, it's like um, there's a secret going on here. So a more ideal would have been the main living area is around here. The, the dining room is the one here. And which makes it convenient to actually open the patio doors and then extend the dining all the way outside the patio. Um, if there are parties and then this area here can be an activity area if this is passive like this is only for talking so this can be for other things like board games the piano or music area entertainment the tv can be here or there can be here so you have to expand a wall here maybe just to accommodate a big tv and then so it's a bit tricky to design this considering that it's narrower but um this is when it comes to, to traffic, it's more ideal. So I'll stop on that for now, um, more ne next week. So let's start um, talking about ramps and stairs because this is very uh, important. Um, <clears throat> this time it's no longer a design of a space, but this architectural feature, which uh, is uh, which will pose a different design challenge in itself. We will start talking about stairs. So there are many terms that you have to memorize as architects when it comes to stairs, and then these are a few of them. The very basic is the rise and the run. Okay, the run is also called thread, as we will see later. Then the rise is the vertical distance between step, each step. Okay, and then you put the um, you put the stair, or at least the, the um, I forgot what's this called. <laughs> um, anyway, so. Supporting the stair mainly is the stringer, okay? So the stringer length is the, the whole length of the stringer down to the, the farthest point here. Um, then if this is, the example I showed here is made of um, wood. So in principle, this is a wrong illustration because the, the beam is supposed to be straight. That's that angle like that. And then, there should be a notch in the stringer because it's going to um, like uh, rest on the beam. Okay, uh, maybe this can also be is possible, but then you run the risk of the stringer sliding along this plane of the beam. Okay, whereas if it's a notch, it's really, it really really holds. So other terms. So again. Riser. This time you see here the other name for the run, which is thread. Um, to some, there's an H. Uh, here, there's none. I guess they're both acceptable. And then you have the well string um, that hides the stringer, then the baluster, then the handrail. And then there's a post, which we call the novel post. Okay. And then normally the novel post is cut by a newel cap and then on the other side if you have a well string at this open side towards the wall you have what we call the wall string okay again more details um here you see a gallery balustrade and then this one the balustrade refers to the whole component the whole collection involving the base rail, the handrail, and then the balusters, okay? So this one also has handrail, base rail, which um, 
in this case is a shoe rail because it rests on top of the well spring uh, well string um, and then the balusters but this uh, whole collection this component when they are on the floor the main floor they are called gallery balustrade but when they are on the stairs along the stairs it's the flight balustrade um, of course you have a wall rail if um, your rail is attached to the wall and then there are stairways the stairs the steps no? that uh, follow the angle of the turn of the stair we call that winders and then we will encounter that later also uh, the stringer the one i showed earlier is different from this because earlier um, it's cut according to the design of the stair while this one is just uh, plain okay and then the stair is like inserted at the sides so we call that a closed stringer um, sometimes or most of the time we cover the riser uh, but if it's not covered so we call it an open riser okay. so again we have the newel post and then as um the alternate for the closed stringer like i showed you earlier is the cut stringer okay. and then here when the first step goes all the way and then makes a round like this it's a turn it's called a d-thread okay normally the first step is like um, emphasized for just simply for design and even the uh, newel post in the olden times are more more elaborate looking uh, but that's only for the design okay. so how do you how do you um, determine how are the measurements of the of the thread and the riser okay, the run the riser so there are two formulas presented here the first one is this two times rise plus one times the run is equal to 25 plus and minus one okay uh, the units here are for inches inches so this formula is incorporated into some building codes um i don't remember the national building code of the philippines having formula for the stairs uh, but the one in the u.s uh, they, they have no? so the other formula is rise times run is equal to 75 again this is inches then plus and minus three okay what is that so we will see a uh, sample computation later so this formula is used for a typical application like attic or landscape stairs the example below shows the calculation for the stairway so the second formula is more for the irregular stairs i'll show you later which is what i mean with irregular stairs so the total rise from the top of stairs to bottom refers to the measurement from the finished floor below to the finished floor above when we say finished floor it means the the floor which considered the finishing already i mean for example if this is concrete you're supposed to put tiles on it so if the tiles is the last thing you're going to put on the floor so that's uh the finished floor okay um even if it's wood even if your floor is wood and then you're going to put parquet tiles over it then the parquet tiles the top of the parquet tiles is your finished floor okay um so you have to know that height and then you have to divide that height this time by the ideal um height of the riser which is actually seven inches okay so we have here a um calculation assuming that the total rise of stair is uh, 102 and 18 um, inches so you divide that by seven inches so you get 14 risers so 14 of those risers but then you recalculate this time you you turn the tables no? so the 102 point uh, and 18 inch inches total rise of stair 
you divide by 14, the number of risers, you get the real um, exact riser height, which is 7 and 5 16. So that's why we don't like the English system because we have to deal with a lot of fractions. So to calculate the run, so we use the first formula, 2 times rise plus 1 times run is equal to 25 plus and minus 1. So we have the 14 and 5, uh, 5, 8, which is the total of 7, 5, 16 times 2, then one run. So we're looking for the run, okay? Because all the other, um, all the other numbers are already determined, okay? So in the end, we, can, we came up with 10 and 3, 8. And then plus and minus 1, therefore, there's a range. So therefore, the run can range from 9 and 3, 8 to 11 to 3, 8. Okay, so you have a choice, actually. So it's not a fixed, it's not something fixed. But... Um, In, in the National Building Code, there's a minimum and maximum uh, measurement for the rise and the run. The minimum for the um, run is 20 centimeters, that's 8 inches. And then the maximum for the rise is also 20 centimeters or 8 inches. So beyond 8 inches, so it's a bit difficult to... Um, to climb the stairs, although it is still possible if your stair is uh, designed as a ladder, but for normal people, it's more uh, uncomfortable. Okay, um, here's another um, version, this time in millimeter. It's another formula that you can also follow. This time we got it from Francois Blondel. Um, it's 630 millimeter is equal to two times the step height divided by the riser plus one times step width divided by the thread. Um, okay, so you just transpose the same, you just do the math. No? I, I have no example for computation, but uh, it's very easy. This is what I told you earlier about the Depending on the, the height of the riser and then also the length of the, the thread, so the stairs can differ. Now if, you're, if the angle, the total angle, like what we have here, this one, um, I'm pointing. So if that angle is like 75 to 90 degrees, so your stair is technically called a ladder. So normally your, your run would be very, very short, maybe only four inches. Otherwise, if it's 75 degrees, so we call it an assembled stair, uh, to 45 degrees are the usual for basements. Um, and then you have your house and flat between 30 to 41 degrees. Uh, and then for public, which is the usual, 20 to 30 degrees and then outside the house the stairs is between 5 to 20 degrees and when you are so this refers for example for patios and then for the driveways you can have five degrees and below so if you're going to compute so we, we already know the riser if you use the formula because that riser will depend on what you're actually designing if it's a stair, if it's a ladder, so we're designing this, so we've already determined the riser. So if you are designing like for a basement or for a public or for outside the stairs. Um, so take note here that for public, this is 17 centimeter or 175 centimeters equal to seven inches. Okay, so this is the ideal one, 20 to 30 degrees. So the, the width, the, so for 17 centimeter rise, the run, ideal run is 29 centimeter. 
So if that's 30 centimeter, that's already one foot. Okay, so which makes sense because your one foot goes to the stair each step. Now, there are many types of stairs. Uh, of course, the most uh, common is the straight or single flight or single arm stair. Okay, or if you turn to a, like an L, so you have a single flight stair, turn, sometimes they call it an L shape, um, or it could also turn before at the start or somewhere below the flight, no? at the bottom. Um, then you also have what they call the U stairs, um, straight single flight, two armed stair with turn landing. Um, this one is the winder. So if you notice that the steps angle. And this one is straight but with a landing at the center. It's because we are, there's a provision in the building code that you should put a landing um, if the flight of stair goes um, beyond 1.5. No, I'm sorry. Um, I'll check that out. But uh, I'll, I'll, I'll get back to you on this. There's supposed to be a, um, a building code requirement where you have to put the landing. You cannot make a straight run, which is um, very long. It's against the building code. Uh, straight, single flight, three arm stair with corner landing. Okay, so so many things, um, so many terms. Then this is uh, simply called circular. But then if it starts something like from the pivot, so this is now called a um, winding stair or um, I forgot what's it called later. It comes out later. There's also a stair which we call scissor stair. This is actually like two stairs. Um, it's like a hidden stair, no? Uh, because, for example, if you come came from A here, you go down to A here below on floor 10. Um, there's actually another alternate floor here where you also go down the same level but then you don't get to see each other. Okay, so this is a uh, scissor stair. I, I seldom see this being applied in, the, in construction. In fact, I have not seen that uh, at all no? so far. I have not witnessed this. Um, the French invented what we call the imperial stairs. So basically it's a stair that splits and then that turns like this. So this is the original imperial stairs, um, although they later on adapt, adapted many ways. No? Uh, for example, here, this can be also called the imperial stair, although uh, some of them call these split stairs. Um, this is in the Garnier Opera House in France. Um, so it's a uh, Normally, it's for public, and then, especially if it's a possibility as well, it's, uh, it's designed like this. No? But lately, modern stairs is um, more simple. Mm. Ah, spiral stairs, okay, that's the term. Let's go back to it. So this is a spiral stair. But if this, the edge of the, the stair or the steps are not within the pivot, it's some distance away. So we call that a circular stair. Okay. Um, so if we make use of a spiral stair, the minimum um, width of the run should be 2 inches or 50 mm. If we make a circular stair, the minimum, or uh, there's no minimum actually, but if we are asked about the length of the, the stair, uh, we get it from 2.7 or 270 mm away, uh, 0.27 away from the edge, and that, that's, a, that's the 
that's what we call the minimum uh, width of the run okay just in case you have to deal with some building codes um, because well we are now more global in practice so you might end up um, designing um, I don't know what's there for a project abroad okay and then their their building code is more technical and more detailed and then uh, for the length of the landing you get it from the center okay okay area of landing clear of any door swing or other obstruction so the landing should be as wide as the width of the stair okay so therefore it's like just making a semicircle and then you get the landing okay as much as possible it is unobstructed meaning to say the door swing should not um, go so not breach that area okay so the same here now aside from the stair you also have to consider the headroom okay um, the headroom should be 2.10 i think in the philippines it's 2.0 um, minimum so you can only go below 2.0 if you are going to a mezzanine okay in which case i think the mezzanine level is like 1.8 so or maybe into an attic but then the building code just takes you to 2.0 so how do you draw a stair so it's simply done this way from the ground floor you cut the stair okay because in principle the floor plan is your view of the of the the house if you cut it horizontally like 90 cm from the ground so at 90 cm you cut it here so you have not even reached the landing so you show the the rest of the stair as hidden lines like this okay now when you are in the intermediate floor the second and third or whatever but between the ground and the top floor you're going to show it like this because um this one is going up but then okay then this one is going down so this is a different way you know right? international style but the philippines we do it differently we start from the same uh steps for the same floor either going up here then going down here like that okay um but the top floor since there are no other stairs on top of the that stair so you simply show where it's going down so from the top you start here going down so again the convention is different uh, for the philippines okay so i just got this got with this up to this morning um and so i did not notice that it has different conventions but the one example hong kong style below is more of what the philippines is using okay so uh, you see the two arrows you should be careful about this because a lot of my students before in graphics and even in design have, uh, they have the they have, they, have, they have difficulty with the stairs and sometimes even um graduating students doing their thesis uh, i remember before that they were uh, i think they almost failed because um the dean at that time um saw how they drew the stairs and they could not do it properly okay. um show what you see in solid lines what you do not see in dotted lines we mentioned that already dotted lines shown the stair steps above the eye level show necessary dotted components okay we already talked about that um 
show a continuous flight without breaks on the top floor of the building. Okay, because from the top, you're going down like this. So there's no other stair on the other side. So the arrow one up and one down on the intermediate floor. We already mentioned that here. Mm -hmm. Sometimes, some architect or some draftsman would put the number of risers. Okay, so how many steps? Um, other times they would even number the steps. Okay, but numbering the steps does not really work because, for example, in this case, it, it, the stair is cut at some point. Therefore, you cannot continue the numbering. Um, in this example, in the drawing, you see a ground floor stair going up, but then it shows that beneath the stair, there is a storage area. So you have to draw that also, because it's always a question, what, how do you use the space beneath the stairs, okay? So placement of door near the stair, um, so you can do it in any of these. Um, notice that it did not follow the, the landing that I showed you. It's because this applies only, just in case you get confused, this applies only when you have to navigate from one stair to the next. Okay, but this one, you're going directly to the door. So it's okay for the door to open to the, um, to the landing. Uh, what you cannot do is make the door open on top of the stair. So like this, this is very uh, dangerous. So this can happen, for example, if you have a basement, um, in which case the ideal solution is to make the uh, door swing out away from the stair, not towards the stair. Uh, also, you have to avoid uh, having a cut like this on the floor. Um, especially if there's no door, um, because people can, when they're not paying attention, can fall here. Or they can stumble in here if you have another step protruding the wall. So you should avoid this. Um, I'm just showing this as an example of how technical drawings are made when the stair is sectioned. This, uh, this section shows a concrete stair. Okay. So in your case, you may section, but um, you'll have to just uh, cover that with uh, fill or with the co color. Um, you don't need to see the structural details, but you have to know how it looks like. So it's better not to, to blacken all of this portion. Um, just to show that, okay, you know that there's a, a four inch or a 100 mm slab here, and then it follows the stairs like this. So this one is either the ground or an open space, etc. So, okay. Uh, this one is when this is made of steel, so only the steps are like section. Okay. Spiral stairway is um, shown like this when it's drawn from the top and then from the lower level. Anyway, you will get a copy of these of these um, slides, and you can also Google them later on. Now, in the building code, I'm uh, not in the building code. In BP three four four, this is the act for the um, uh, PWD accessibility code. Um, they discourage the use of this profile for the stair. Um, but that is if your stair is not made of wood. Because if it's made of wood, so you cannot avoid this. By the way, this protruding part of the stair is called a nosing. Uh, it's more popularly, popularly called nosing. Um, there are other terms for it um, abroad. So, the ideal is a slanted nose if this were a made of concrete. Now, because you cannot have this in concrete, this will break. Okay, this nosing will break. 
But if this is wood, there's no problem. Now, ramps. Okay. Uh, most of the time, we make use of ramps because of accessibility requirements. Okay. There's a law that requires it. So otherwise, we use ramps uh, for efficiency, especially when, when delivering um, things, bulky items, which we have to deliver by carts or any wheel uh, transportation. So here I'm showing you, um, most of the pictures here will come from BP344 or the accessibility code. Um, there's usually a tactile block before and after the ramp, okay? So that uh, if you're blind, so you get to know that you're expecting something. So this time a change in elevation. And then take note that the handrail is specially designed to have two levels here. And then um, the ramp has a particular gradient, which is one is to 12. Um, we will tackle that later. Um, this is a ramp that turns, okay? And so you see the same warning tactile block uh, before and after the ramp, and it follows after the landing, before and after the ramp. So this is the type of ramp that is required if the entrance is not at the same level as the site arrival grade. So the entrance here is like three steps up, so you need a ramp. This is um, when you have a wide ramp, so you have to divide it into two, making sure that uh, each ramp is within uh, within maximum or minimum distance. No? So whenever there's a three meter ramp, and this is the same with stairs, if you have a three meter wide stair, you have to divide that by two. You have to put a handrail at the center, okay? So that if you have a seven meter wide stair, you have to put that in the middle. But then if it becomes nine meters, so you have to put two hundreds, divide that into three, okay? Because the maximum is three meters. I know. That's for, for stairs, but for the ramps, Okay, uh, this one is three meters, so divided into two because the ramp is only like 1.5. Um, there has to be a 100 millimeter minimum, like a low wall at the sides. And then the handrail has to have, has to, I mentioned to you that there are two levels. They should be 200 millimeter apart. And then uh, 50 mm away from the the post. Okay, and then the height differs. The lower one is 700 mm. The higher one is the 900 mm. Okay, so the main reason is that um, they're seated, so they can they grab the lower handle. Can okay. but then if someone is assisting, that person assisting can grab the higher handle like this one. So this is wrong, this, is, this should be 0.90, this is 0.70. So at the end of the handrail, you should extend by 30 uh, centimeter or 300 mm. Mm. So if your ramp goes to the street, the curb or the the uh, sidewalk you have to put this barrier here because it's very dangerous if you lose control you have if you're the one on the wheelchair and or if you're the one pushing the wheelchair you might push it too hard so the, the wheelchair goes directly to the street so at least there's a barrier okay um if there's a parking slot so the, Curb ramp is at the side. And this one is from the walk, sidewalk to the road. Okay, so this looks like this in isometric. So this is curved like that. 
Um, we sometimes see this in, uh, I don't know, in, in Bohol, I have not seen it here yet. I have not really observed, but in Cebu, um, at first, when the street is new, it's like if they have this, but then after so much repair, where they just covered the old street with, with, uh, with uh, asphalt, so even this gets covered by asphalt, so they don't follow it anymore. So there are two variations to protect the disabled uh, in corners. One is to put this barrier here at the corner. Another one is to have a plant box like this. Okay, so they're protected. And then um, the minimum or the maximum um, height difference between two levels, especially a ramp, and then the next level is 19 mm. Okay. Uh, because otherwise, if this is higher, um, if you're in the wheelchair, actually it, it's very uncomfortable. Now, if, if we were not doing this online, we were in class, I would probably be uh, borrowing a wheelchair and asking you to try to try the wheelchair in Safad, especially the Safad has a, a ramp all the way to the to the second floor. The third floor doesn't have uh, uh, access. No? Um, so you can see that the gradient there at some point is okay, and then there's a particular ramp in Safad, which is near the the toilet where the, the where the um the slope is really steep, okay? And that's why students would play around there, um, destroying all our chairs with wheels, no? Um, okay, now this one, we have to check the, well, I did not have time to change this because as far as I know, um, the maximum, length of a ramp could only be six meters, not 10 meters as stated here. Um, so that beyond six, you have to put a landing, okay? It's the same here. So this could be six meters and then a landing, another flight of, uh, not of flight, no? uh, another ramp. Now, if the, Ramp is like 1 is to 20 in proportion. This is called accessible pathway, meaning even if there's no one assisting the handicapped, the person in the wheelchair, he can manage by himself. Um, 1 is to 10, you already need someone to, to push the wheelchair. And that's another thing there. No? If, this, if we were having that exercise I mentioned to you earlier, um, Part of that exercise is for someone to push uh, a person in a wheelchair. So even even the one assisting would feel no? that you would that you would feel how it would also to assist someone on a wheelchair. Because if you're going to navigate a steep ramp, uh, it's actually scary. Uh, sometimes they would turn the ramp like opposite direction and um, and go backwards because otherwise they, they're very scared. They cannot control it if it's forward. Okay, so beyond one is to 10, this is considered hazardous. Okay. Now, the gradient that we mentioned earlier is one is to 12. So it's between one to 20 and one to 10, which is something like, it depends on the stamina of the handicap. Uh, he can either go at it alone, or they, he could also be um, assisted. So 12.5 is a, is a good, uh, acceptable um, gradient.
Now, but that differs when we're talking about vehicles. Um, in the vehicle, there should be a transition, okay? Uh, 10 feet before and after the ramp. This is something that is most of the time neglected by practitioners. And you can see that uh, um, in a lot of the in a lot of the um, department stores with ground with the um, with the uh, basement parking or buildings with basement parking. And then it's it's important that the footpath is at a particular distance away so that you get to see the people before you arrive, even while you are in the transition point, okay? So here there's no transition and then, so the danger is that by the time you see them, you're so near already and then that's uh, dangerous, okay? Um, so you have to be aware of the transition points even when you are designing curved ramps, okay? I think this is the, the last. Um, in ramps, we draw it this way. We point to the direction using this type of, um, like an arrowhead. Uh, sometimes some architects would make this type of uh, arrow uh, and then start off with a circle here and then always write ramp up or ramp down, okay? so that you will know if this is going up or going down. The same if, you, if you're using this triangle symbol, if it goes up or down, okay, you put that ramp up or ramp down. So please take note of that. Um, all the other technical data about ramps and stairs, you can easily find in the internet. So those are the some things that I wanted to share with you. Uh, do check the BP344. Uh, there's an online downloadable version in PDF uh, for free. Um, for all those minimum and maximum requirements that I mentioned to you about, about RAMs. And also, I think in Canvas, I think um, the architect process also placed there some other links that you can access. Okay, so your homework is your next design exercise. This is not kitchen design, I'm sorry. Um, and it's due Saturday, midnight. You have a lot of time to work on it, okay? Um, background is this. There's a structure designed to have three modules of six by nine meters with a central module acting as a main circulation hall. Open at the front and rear, but with a one meter the low wall at the rear. So this is the front with the porch, and at the rear you have a one meter wall. At the front is a three meter by six meter porch, which leads to the driveway or the sidewalk. That should have been a sidewalk. Okay, so the plan is very, very simple. Um, two rooms and one hall, the same dimension. But when it was reviewed, the client wants to add a semi-basement and a second floor. Semi-basement meaning it's not, part of it is above the ground, half of it is above the ground. Um, so therefore you have to raise the ground floor. Um, and then following the same floor plan as the first. So you just uh, copy the, the this plan for the basement and then the second floor. So this will raise the finished floor line of the ground floor to 100, 1,200 millimeter from the finished grade line, so from the outside. In the original design, the ground floor is only 300 mm from the FGL and the patio at 150 mm. So to make the structure accessible to persons with disabilities, a small elevator will be provided at the back. So the ground floor, however, must be accessed by a ramp from the outside, okay? so. Your task is to design the stair that connects the basement to the ground floor to the second floor, okay? 
And then you also need to design the stair and ramp that will connect the ground floor from the outside. Okay, so you're going to put that here. The stair that connects the basement to this floor, the ground floor and the third floor. Then you're going to design a stair here with ramp because this time the porch is higher, much higher than the sidewalk. Okay. Um, the drawing requirements, floor plans of the basement, ground floor and second floor showing stairs and ramps. Then detail of stairs connecting the basement, ground floor, and second floor at scale one is to 50. You should provide plans, then one elevation, and then one section. And then detail of the stair and ramp connecting the ground floor to the outside. Again, scale one is to 50. Provide a plan. I think there are only one plan. And then one elevation and one section. Okay you have to label dimension especially. Draw in ink on an A4 size paper. Provide necessary dimensions and labels for the stairs and then the ramp. So it's not really a um, design where you use color and style. So it's a very technical way of design, but uh, stairs can still be designed. Um, the, how you design a stair for the entrance and also the stair leading to the to the upper floor, aside from the usual, uh, gives you more points. Okay, I think that's it. Oh, okay, so I did not change this. So let's not take back all that. Um, so there are only 20 people around. I guess the rest are having difficulty with uh, the internet connection, um, but I think uh, the allowance that we gave for the plate or the exercise is um, good enough for them to to catch up. Um, some announcements: we will have a departmental exam for our midterms, which means we will all the classes, all the design three classes will start together in the morning. Um, at a particular time, everyone will have a, an online session together and then the problem will be given and then you will submit at a particular time in the afternoon of the same day, okay? Um, initially, we were thinking of, uh, of having you record yourself, drawing, etc., but then we decided to do away with that as long as you... you um, you submit on time. And second announcement is that after midterm, you will only have one plate, okay? Um, the original plan was to have two plates. So therefore, we will spend a lot of time trying to um, making sure that the design is really correct. So there has to be a lot of consultations. But consultation in our case, um, you can actually just send me an email and then as long as you explain it properly and if you really can't explain it without talking to me, then we can schedule a, an online meeting individually. Okay, so the plate is individual also. It will be introduced to you next week. The plate will be introduced, I think, next week. Uh, in fact, we will have um, a general meeting, um, a plenary meeting with all the other design uh, subjects because there, there will also be some lecture about site analysis and other, other things. A third announcement is that I will be requiring a portfolio from you. So all your design uh, design exercises before bathroom bedroom kitchen living so you should put that into one portfolio and then submit you can change the design especially if um you realize that you made 
it's a mistake it's, uh, because I think there was someone who asked me that if she can change the design. And I don't, I, I don't know whether you're also required the same portfolio in another class. If, if so, then good no. So you just make one project for the two subjects, for, for me and then for that. But the other, uh, the other class, design, design class, um, AR2100, AR I don't know whether they require a portfolio, but I, I will, okay? So those are my announcements so far. I will also post them later in the in Canvas. So do you have any questions before we go? Um sir, regarding yes. the portfolio mm -hmm. when say paper size. Paper size A4 is or? A4. We just decided okay. that this morning that uh in fact this uh, activity was supposed to be for A3, but they decided that we will just use A4 because it's more accessible than A3. Okay, so um, thank you. If you do a drawing in A4, I mean in A3, you can print that out to PDF in A4, so that's no problem. So even if you, if you made the drawing very big before. Okay, so you have to, I, I hope all of you know how to convert a documents to PDF, no? and especially to to combine them into just one PDF instead of submitting one file per page. Um, because I, I would really prefer that you just submit one file with multiple pages than in PDF. Any more? Um, I have not set yet the deadline for um, deadline for this. Just to clarify, how high is the sidewalk to the porch? Um, the porch from the sidewalk originally is one fifty mm, but now since the ground floor is and the ground floor is 300 mm so the ground floor now is raised to one 200 so it's 1050 mm the porch so it's 150 mm below the ground floor okay um or six inches below the ground floor so if your sidewalk is zero zero but then i think the 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 distance between the porch, the edge of the porch towards the sidewalk and the sidewalk itself, uh, I did not specify that there, but um, it's in principle, it's like just a few inches away or a few centimeters away. Uh, it's hardly one step, no, it's hardly 30 cm. Okay, I guess there's no more questions. Anyway, if you sir, have, have yes, uh, just one one more question, sir. Sorry. Um, yes. This is regarding the drawing, sir. What kind, what kind of section are you talking about? Like, uh, would you recommend like a, a cross section of this stair, or like a longitudinal? It should be along the the flight of the stair. Okay, so not a cross section. So, if this is your, if your stair is this long, you you cut it along the the flight. So not not along the the width, so along the length. Okay. Now, if you're going to design a a stair, because the section, the reason why we draw a section is that we want to show the changes in levels. Okay. So you have to look for the view where the change in level is crucial that it should be shown in a section. So in if you're going to make a, a section along uh, crosswise, along the width of the stair, you only section like one step of the stair. But then if you section it along the length of the stair, you see there the profile of the stair, and then you can dimension. So you also see the profile of the, the landing. Um, I think that's the, of course, if you have a 
a stair, like the U stair. So you have two flights of stairs parallel to each other. You just section one, but make sure that you see the other stair. Okay, so you don't select the view where you don't see the other stair. Okay, that's the same with the ramp. You set if the ramp goes um, like you, it turns. So there are two ramps, um, and in section one, you make sure that you get to see the other ramp. So normally you section the one, the, the, the lower ramp, so that you see the higher ramp. So unless, yeah, that's the basic. OK, no more? OK, so I guess that's it for now. Um, anyway, more questions, you can just email me. And then I'll try to uh, answer. Um, so sorry if I cannot answer if you email me at um, midnight or 1 p.m. or 1 a.m. <laughs> I, I receive emails at uh, messages at 1 a.m. and 2 a.m. So I answer them as soon as I get breakfast. So I don't like answering emails while in an empty stomach. Okay. So uh, we will still meet maybe maybe on Wednesday, but I'll, I'll give you notice if we will. Okay, so goodbye for now.